These days, oil is everywhere. It fuels our cars, it heats our apartments, it's in our bike tires, and it's even needed to make our Tupperware containers. Petroleum is firmly established in the global energy system, but that might not be the case in the future. Within the next 20 or 30 years, there could very well be a turning of the tide, an energy transition that will heavily depend on federal and public support of a renewable energy future. In order to understand how and why federal influence is necessary to alter the current path of our energy landscape, let's take a look at the history of petroleum. Oil wasn't always a foundational fuel in the American economy. Before there was oil, there was coal. Before there was coal, there was kerosene. And before there was kerosene, there was whale oil. Rapid transitions to and from energy systems have happened in the past, but more recently, federal level support has been necessary to entrench certain fuel sources in American culture. 101 years ago, in 1916, oil drilling was invigorated with the introduction of a tax incentive for expensing intangible drilling and dry hole costs. The provision allowed the intangible costs of drilling a well, such as wages, fuel, and ground clearing, to be written off and deducted within the first year of the well's life, as opposed to being capitalized and depreciated over time. This essentially meant that it was cheaper and much more appealing to drill new oil wells because corporations could get immediate and full tax write-offs when they drilled, instead of having to spread the amount deducted from their taxes over the life of the well. In conjunction with this tax incentive, an oil depletion allowance was introduced into law in 1926, which allowed companies to treat a certain percentage of the oil they pulled from the ground as capital equipment and thus get a tax break from it. As a result, oil companies could deduct 27.5% from their gross revenues. Texas Senator Tom Connolly, who sponsored the tax break, even admitted, we could have taken a 5 or 10% figure, but we grabbed 27.5% because we are not only hogs, but the odd figure made it appear as though it was scientifically arrived at. Both these tax incentives meant a large boom for oil. They drove down its cost and made drilling new wells tantalizing. Over the course of the century, oil and gas benefited from $446.98 billion in government-funded incentives. So oil didn't just sprout up as a result of new technologies and ambitions, although new tech definitely did help. It instead became entrenched in the American energy market in large part because of government influence. Alongside the massive tax breaks that provided a strong foundation for cheap oil, the federal government indirectly influenced oil's importance through large infrastructure projects like the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956. Publicly sponsored roads cemented a car-reliant culture, which ultimately meant a reliance on oil. Even further, the United States has sponsored military and diplomatic missions into an oil-rich Persian Gulf in order to safeguard a steady supply of fuel. Overall, it would not be a reach to say that the United States government has spent over $1 trillion on oil and gas in the last century. The important lesson here is that government action is necessary to influence energy markets. When it comes to energy, there is no such thing as a free market. While other sources of energy like coal, wind, and solar have definitely benefited from subsidies in the latter half of the 20th century, the overall amount pales in comparison to benefits received by oil and gas companies. Petroleum subsidized history makes it clear that we need strong and steady government incentives in order to make a swift transition to renewable energy. In the case of wind, government influence has come in the form of the PCT or production tax credit. Since its implementation in 1992, however, the incentive has been allowed to expire multiple times, which has led to a boom and bust cycle instead of a steady rise of investment in wind farms. Technologically, renewables have advanced to the point where they can compete toe-to-toe -to -toe with coal or other energy forms. However, in order for sustainable energy systems to truly take hold, they need substantial subsidies that lock them into American culture, much like how oil was a century before. Hey, I'm currently traveling right now, so that's why I'm in a different location. But if you like the video, please share it on Reddit or Facebook or Twitter. 
Also, if you're interested, you can go over to my Patreon page where you can support me financially. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you next Friday. Bye.